Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. This is now question number five from this May, June 2022, paper two, paper two one, the, um, the pervariant one of this paper two from this year from the Cambridge IGCSE 0580 exam. This question is about sequences. Part A says the nth term of a sequence is 60 minus 8n. Find the largest number in this sequence. Now, this is a sequence that is a decreasing sequence. Every term is going to be less than the term before it because you're always taking away something from this number. So, of course, the largest number of the sequence is going to be its first term, okay, which is when n equals 1. When n equals 1, you have 60 minus 8 times 1. This is like the first term of the sequence, which <laughs> is also called a. That's 60 minus 8, which is 52. So that's a very simple question here, but some people might not understand what it means. Um, they might think, oh, when n is really big, it's going to be big. You know, when n is really big, it's going to be really small. It's going to be negative. It's going to be really negative. And you can't, you can't know, know what the last value of n is going to be. There's no limit to it. So the, last, the largest number of the sequence is going to be its very first term. And don't think that's going to be when n is 0. No. The first term of the sequence is always the first term, n, when n equals 1. You can't say it's going to be 60. It's going to be when n equals 1, which is 52. Okay, because the sequence begins in its first term, not in its zeroth term. There's no such thing. All right, then it says, here they are. Um, here, here are the first five terms of a different sequence: 12, 19, 26, 33, 40. Find an expression for the nth term of this sequence. Okay, so for this question here, what we need to do is we need to see how the sequence is changing from term to term. Okay, and we can see. Let's see how it changes. You've got to add seven. And then you've got to add 7 again. And then you've got to add 7 again. And then you've got to add 7 again. So we can see that it's increasing by 7 each time. Now, there are different ways of, of writing or finding the nth term. Okay, one is the way that I prefer is just by using some sort of logic rather than using the formula. There's a formula that you can use, which I prefer in IGCSE not to use it. I'll show you how to do it that way as well just for those people who have learned that way and they might want to see if they're doing it correctly or incorrectly, but I, I prefer to do it in this way. I know that it's going up by sevens. Now, the common mistake that many people make is they'll say it means it's n plus seven, and that's wrong. That's completely wrong. It's not n plus seven. Okay. The reason why is what we must do is we must see it's going up by sevens. That's related to the times table that increases by seven each time, which is a seven times table. That means it's got something to do with 7n. If it was going up by 3s, I would write 3n. If it's going up by 5s, I'd write 5n. If it was going down by 2s, I'd write minus 2n. It's going up by 7, so I'm going to put 7n. That means the, that will cause the numbers to increase by 7 each time. Okay, but the problem is we want it to start from 12. This is going to start from 7. If I put n equals 1, I'm going to get 7. n equals 2, I'm going to get 14. n equals 3, I'm going to get 21. I want it to start from 12. I want the first term to be 12. So how do I, if I put n equals 1, I'm going to get 7. How do I make 7 into 12? Well, I have to add 5 to it. Okay, if you think about it, if I wrote 7n, I'm going to have 7, 14, 21, and I'm going to have 28, and I'm going to have, <coughs> and I'm going to have 42. Sorry, 28. Yeah, and then I'm going to have, um, that's going to be 7 times 5, 30, that's going to be, uh, yeah, 35. Sorry, what am I doing? 7, 5 is a 35, so that's going to be 35. And you can see every time our sequence, we have to do what to get to it? We have to add 5. So it's going to be 7n plus 5. So it's a very simple, easy way of finding the nth term for these linear or arithmetic sequences. Okay, you see you have to add the same thing each time, then that means you've got to, that number is going to be the number multiplying by n. The problem with n plus 7, if you put n equals 1, you're going to get 8. All right, n equals 2, you're going to get 9. n equals 3, you're going to get 10. It's going to go up by 1s. Why? Because it's 1 times n. This is related to the 1 times table. That's why it's going to go up by 1s each time. So it's no way n plus 7. That's a very, very common mistake when people say, oh, you have to add 7, so we put n plus 7. No, you have to add 7, so it's related to the 7 times table, 7 times n. So it's 7n, and then we want to start from 12, so 7n plus 5. This is one way you could do it. Just write the... 7n on top, 7, 14, 21, 28, 35, and then see how each time you have to add the same thing. You have to add 5 each time to get to this number, so it's 7n plus 5. Okay, that's a nice, easy way of doing it. There's also some students learn this way, un equals a. 
plus n minus 1 times d. A lot of students use this method here. And um, they say, okay, the common difference is the number that you get when you take a number and subtract the number before it, which is this plus 7, basically. 40 minus 33, 7, 33 minus 26, 26 minus 9. All of them give you 7, so the common difference is 7. And A stands for the first term in the sequence, which is 12. And we have to find the nth term. So we say the nth term is going to be A, which is 12, plus N minus 1 times D, which is N minus 1 times 7. So when you... Um, expand that you get 12 plus 7n minus 7 which gives you 7n 12 minus 7 is 5 7n plus 5 is nth term okay so there's two methods of doing this one is like using some sort of logic and the other one is using this method here okay so both of them are perfectly fine okay these would be your steps for the, for this i guess and this would be your steps for that if you didn't show steps for this there would be no problem in this particular question all right so there we have the answer for part b of um, this question number five from this paper. Other questions from this paper can be found by clicking on this link that should appear somewhere over here. Other questions from the topic of sequences um, can be found in, in this link over here. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking over here. Thank you for watching and see you soon.